Hello, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, the process from Houdini to Rhino and Grasshopper into Revit. Um, we're site model creation using the Houdini uh, procedural site tools. So right here, I've just got a Mapbox node that is conveniently in Houdini, and this brings in a polygon mesh with uh, satellite imagery on it, and as well as corresponding OSM data. So you can also get those from external sources. And I'll just go ahead and drop down uh, the two components, the terrain generator and the building generator. Go ahead and wire in the respective components. And we'll start with the terrain. So we can just drop this, but it doesn't really matter for now. And all we really want is the road geometry. Uh, we're not going to be bringing in vegetation because uh, this is going to go to Revit where we're not going to have high poly vegetation like we would in uh, visualization. So we'll set this to complex roads because we want some depth to our roads like this. We can just go ahead and mess around with these values like this. Something more accurate. And now you'll see that we're actually missing some, some road data over here. And if we check our OSM data just to see what's going on um, for roads, we see that there's actually, there are some lines there, but it's a bit jumbled. And if we take off uh, pedestrian and footway, we can see that those all disappear. If we turn on other, um, it shows up, or we get these little pieces. So sometimes you want to bring in other data, sometimes you won't. Um, so if we go ahead and look back at the map box mode, we can see that there is a street um, that runs through here. So we'll go ahead and create that. So what we can do is, like we have this um, model right here, and we just want to fuse these uh, curves together. And after that, we can use the delete small uh, labs, delete small parts to get rid of these uh, little floating pieces. I'm going to set this to perimeter, and we can just bump up our area like that. And now for generating the actual curves, all we're going to do is go and create a new geometry node on the side. Make sure we have show all objects turned on so we see um, other geometry nodes. We're going to bring in an object merge. Reference our map box nodes so we can see our terrain so we know um, where we want the road lines to go. And then we're just going to bring this down so we can see the curves like this. Drop down a merge and we can go ahead and start creating our curves. So we can just go to X and make sure we have point snaps turned on, uh, create a curve, and go ahead and click enter, and I'll just go ahead and start creating lines here. So that's one, enter to finish, go ahead and create another curve, and we'll go right here, so, and we'll just Create it along here like this. Enter. And now if we disconnect this, create a null object here and call this out street curves. Go up a level. Back inside here, we can now turn off those other objects. We'll create a merge and object merge and bring in those curves we just created. And if we wire this into our merge, we see that it's all now all together and we just want to go ahead and run this through another fuse. Now, if we go ahead and back to our terrain, gener terrain generator, we'll see that it actually is not generating any geometry yet. And this is because um, all the curves inside of here are being passed through another OSM filter, which takes into account um, OSM curve attributes. So if we go to here and go to our geometry spreadsheet, we notice on the primitive attributes, we have an attribute called highway, and this specifies things like the if it's a primary, um, the corresponding type here. So we need to go ahead and assign an attribute here. So we can just do that with an attribute create node. And inside of here, we're going to call this um, highway, so it matches the same type. It's on the primitive level, and it's a string, and we'll call this uh, primary. So we could assign what any of the uh, possible OSM filter types. And now if we go into merge or back to our train generator, we see that we're now getting row geometry there. So perfect. Now we can go ahead and just look at our buildings, any of our buildings. And this is 
uh, of New York, so the data is pretty good. We don't need to do any uh, adjustment. And we can go ahead and run this into a fuse. And now we can save this out. Um, or actually, first we need to go ahead and run this through the divide node, like this. And this just gets rid of all of our ngons, basically. And we do this because once we import the ngon or the building geometry into uh, Rhino, if they re uh, it'll basically just delete all ngons. So we need to get rid of those by using a divide node. And for the terrain, uh, we want to do a couple things. We're going to throw it in a blast node and go ahead and blast our curbs, our edges, and our roads. And then we're just, we can just do the manual selection to get rid of these bottom polygons. And now we just have the top node. Um, top polygons here, we can go ahead and drop down a group node. Set this to edges, turn off base group. Group by edges and turn on unshared edges. And then drop down the edge group to curves. And specify that group we just created. And now we have our border curves. And we can go ahead and save this as an IGES file right here, and um, this allows um, us to bring this uh, vector data in. And the last file we need is just the terrain geometry. So I'll go ahead and save this out as terrain.obj, and you can use a file cache to save all of this if you want. So you can go back to it without having to reload every time. So now I'll go into Rhino inside Revit. Um, I'm going to open Rhino, and in here we'll mainly be working inside of Grasshopper, but um, one thing we do need to do inside of Rhino is import our IGS file right here, and make sure we um, align this to all of our other files, which just happen to be at the origin. So I'll just go ahead and center this to the origin, like so. And now I'm going to open up a Grasshopper uh, document that I've created. Uh, specifically for use with the procedural site modeling tools. And I also need to make sure I'm uh, using the correct units between Grasshopper and, uh, or Rhino and Reddit. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the solver for now, it's just so I can specify all of these instances. So for here, we're asking for the IGS files from Houdini. So we're just gonna set multiple curves right here. Now we don't need these anymore, so we can go and hide that layer. And then up here, we're asking for the terrain geometry. So we'll load in our terrain.obj. And now I will go ahead and enable my solver, and I'll be right back. Okay, it's gone ahead and finished cooking, and that took about um, a minute. And we can see now inside of Revit, we've got our uh, grep geometry for the road um, blocks you would call them, as well as uh, the uh, terrain geometry that it sits on. So from here, we can go ahead and import our building. So we'll go back into Grasshopper and specify our um, building instance. So this, the geometry that comes in on the buildings is so complicated. Uh, there's not really any good way to convert it to nerves, especially since it's mainly just all non-manifold geometry. Um, which could be fixed using uh, a pretty simple process like a Boolean union or a voxelization inside of Houdini. But um, then that just ge generates common geometry that's too complex to convert to NURBS. So, so far, um, I have no solution for that. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and write this out to a um, geometry direct shape. And once this loads, so this is using a geometry direct shape because it is not a brep, um, whereas these are breps, and that's why it's got these much more clean lines. If we were to import the terrain as its direct um, OBJ component, this would um, be all triangulated, and we would see all of the edges, and there's no way to hide that in Revit directly, uh, especially if you want to look at it with shading. So we've got our direct shape in here. Now we're just going to oops, the Rhino and should be viewing this, but we're not. So we're just going to go ahead and say recompute, and I'll be right back. 
So it's now finished recomputing, and you can see, just get right out of the way that we've got our um, building geometry in here now. Uh, so the only thing that um, is really left to maybe demonstrate is, let's say we want to build on this empty site here. Well, because this is um, uh, a breadth geometry, we can't really operate on it. You see, it's just a, a generic model right here. So there's nothing we can do to it. But let's say we want to treat that as a um, as a topo surface. How can we do that? So um, the solution is actually pretty easy. If we go back inside of Rhino and Grasshopper, um, the first thing we're going to want to do is well, Grasshopper as well. Go over to our islands right here, and I'm just going to do this inside of Rhino. So I'm going to bake this out. Um, you can automate this inside of Grasshopper, of course. So inside here, I'm just going to find that plot that I want to, um, let's go ahead and turn off our preview, find the plot that I want to turn into a topo surface. So that's right here, um, open Rhino. So that's this plot right here. We'll just go ahead and invert our selection, delete everything else, and go into Grasshopper and just not preview anything. Perfect, and turn on shaded. So now I'll go ahead and I'll explode this, and I want to grab my top surface, and I want to contour this. I'm going to go to my front view, just go up like this, and then I'll say distance of one inch, this is pretty small. We need to create a bounding um, surface around it, so on our contours, they're just open edge, but we need to close that so we can just go ahead and um, open up Grasshopper. Actually, it's a lot easier to do this. And you can just create a breadth right here and then um, set one breadth, grab this, do a breadth edges, and this is just going to grab all of our bordering edges. Perfect. And then we can just bake. Okay. All right. Now we can delete this and unisolate, and we just want to grab our edge curves. So um, we can do a selection filter and say we only want to grab curves. So we'll grab all our curves here. We'll just create a group. And then if we um, isolate, you can see now we have this bounding curve. So I'll go ahead and undo that isolate. And now we'll run the X, not an explode, an export. And this will be our site.dwg. We get perfect. We can go ahead and hide these. And then the last thing we want to do is delete this and then rejoin. So we're going to want to join. Okay. And so now we're going to unpin the site that we want. And we need to make sure that. Um, before we do this, we actually disable our solver. So we're going to disable our, look, disable our solver, and we've deleted that um, that block right there. So now we'll go ahead and um, import. So import CAD, and we'll import our site. So. Um, Our site DWG we just brought in, and here it is right here. And now we can go ahead and masking in site Tobo service, create from import select import instance, and grab this. Okay, and now we have, we can go ahead and delete that. Uh, and now we have a Tobo service here that represents the site. Um, and we can go ahead and let's say, um, Create a building pad on this, so building pad, just grab a line and just like this. Okay. And now we've got a building pad. Shaded. There's our building pad and our topo surface. And if we just want to create um, sort of like the curves or the depth on this, that's why instead of Rhino, we grab this. So we can just go back into Grasshopper and um, create a breadth, set one breadth, 
grab that selected, and then just do that breath direct shape right here. Go ahead and re-enable our solver. Save, close, close. You can see now we've got um, that back here, and we've got our token service. So now I'm going to show how you can um, work with polygon meshes in Revit or sort of visualize them. Um, there's not much we can do, so it's going to be fairly short. Um, so here I've got this organic mesh. I'm just bringing it through Grasshopper. I'm going to add a mesh um, direct shape, um, which comes inside a Rhino inside Revit. And I'll just go ahead and plug this in here. And now we've got our geometry inside Revit. Since I have this, I can go ahead and quit out of this. I'll just disable my solver. And if I open up a 3D view, you can see our first problem is that we have all these um, wireframe or all these wireframe edges for every polygon. And you'll say maybe I can just go ahead and change the hidden line or shade it, but you see it's um, showing up no matter what. So there's um, a few ways around this. One, we're going to set to consistent colors. And we're going to want to use either um, visibility graphics or view templates. Or now um, I'll just use the view template on a 3D. So under generic models, I can override my lines right here. And for color, I'm going to set it to this um, color, which is the default. And you see that now uh, it's all turned off. And if we want some depth, we can turn on shadows. Um, and we're seeing it's projecting. Um, based off the ground plane, it looks like. So if we move this up, let's just go to our elevation and we can move this up to about here. To unpin it first. Okay. Now if we move this up to here, now we go to our 3D view. You can see we're getting some more depth on this and we're not seeing those lines anymore. So that's one option. And we basically just use a very similar workflow um, now there, so if we come to our levels, uh, we can see this is what we've got. If we set this to consistent colors, um, let's go ahead and go to level two, actually, just to have something more interesting. And we can go and now work inside our view templates. So we'll go to manage view templates and we'll work in, I'll just mod it or we'll fit a new one. We'll just call this plan. And in here, we'll edit our model overrides. We can do the same thing, go to generic models. And we can override our lines again, so set this to the same gray. And then on our cut through pattern, we can set this to something like a solid fill. Go ahead and apply these. Click OK. And we need to apply that view template to the plan, apply properties. You can see now we've got the solid fill black. And if we change this to consistent colors, we can turn on shadows. Now we've got this um, more depth and cut through. I'm going to leave off shadows for now, that's a bit much. And we can just go ahead and, like we normally would, start modeling walls in here. So we can go like this. And we're probably going to want to set that cut through as well. So we go manage view templates, plan, go back to here. Under walls, we'll set our pattern cut to solid as well. Just so that matches. Okay. Apply view template, plan, apply properties. Okay. So now we have something like this. And you know, we can go ahead and do the same thing in section. We go Cut a section through here, through our section view, and in our section, we don't want to crop our view, and then we can and just bring this wall up up here, and we'll go to a view template, um, manage view templates, fit anyone, we'll call this section, and same thing, go to generic models, lines, color right here and cut patterns solid okay apply okay okay apply view template section and now we're cutting through here and we can see the solid um, we set this to consistent colors and we can go back to our levels and just maybe move this to somewhere more appropriate a little further out like right here back into our section, and then we can turn on shadows to get that depth back in. So um, that those are just the quick ways, and I hope this was helpful.